Amen. Amen. Good, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Great El Bethel family and friends. We are at another Wednesday, another hump day, the middle of the week. Uh, and I hope and pray that your day has been filled with uh, the presence of God and you felt him and he's kept you thus far. And if he has, you ought to at least stop right there and just say thank you that he has kept you and he's keeping you. Uh, we are uh, excited about, again, another Bible study night. Thankful for everyone that is tuning in. Uh, we don't take it lightly. And again, we appreciate everyone that does tune in. Uh, for our Bible studies. Uh, we won't be before you long on tonight, but we won't quench the spirit as well. Amen. Amen. But as always, let us start with a word of prayer and then uh, and we'll go from there. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for this another day's journey. God, we thank you for how you've kept us, how you watched over us all week long thus far. God, we thank you just for this another opportunity to be able to come to you right now. Now, God, we pray and ask that first that you would forgive us for all unforgiven sins. Again, as always, God, we pray that you would create within us a clean heart that we could truly serve you. Now, God, we pray that you would move like only you can on tonight, that you would refill our cups, oh God, that we can feel your presence, that we can walk according to the way that you would have us to walk and do the things that you would have us to do. Strengthen and be with every household that's tuning in on tonight. Father, we pray that whatever their desire, whatever their heart, whatever their need is right now, God, that you would fix it, that you would move like only you can. Now, God, be with us through on tonight. Let something be said that we can take it and apply it to our everyday living, that we may have a closer walk with you and that you may be glorified and magnified. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, again, just before we get started, make sure that y'all are sharing, starting watch parties, invite somebody uh, to come and share with us on tonight for tonight's ministry uh, and what uh, thus says the Lord. So, invite, hit the like, start a watch party. We want to share and uh, all the word of God that we possibly can on tonight. So, uh, if we don't need anybody else, we definitely need the Lord on tonight. Amen. And each and every day. So it is my sincere prayer that you be a part of our outreach ministry. Amen. Evangelism team and y'all share and get the word out uh, on tonight. But um, keeping it with Pastor McNeely's theme and what he um, has, what has been placed on his heart as far as uh, talking about compassion, uh, love, if you will. He wants to continue to talk about that. And I couldn't help uh, but be reminded uh, of how, first of all, the love of God and the compassion that he has for each and every one of us. I couldn't help but be reminded of daily things, daily events, daily things that uh, we see that sometimes we take for granted that we forget that if it had not been for God doing those things in our hearts and in our minds and our lives and guiding us the way he would have us to go, if it had not been for his love and the compassion that he has for us, there's no telling where we would be. And I, I can't help but to think and imagine that Sometimes, somewhere in there, we have to understand in order to have a true compassion and a true love uh, that God wants us to have, we have to have a relationship with God first and foremost. We have to have some form of communication with him to be able to allow him to embed himself within us, within our hearts, within our minds, to truly do and have the compassion that he would have us to have. Um, just today, just today, I was at work. I was in full gear, uh, going to check out uh, and for full gear. For those that do not know, I am a police a police officer. Uh, that's my job by day that pays the bills. But my calling is to truly be the be the minister for God. So, but but pays the bills is me being a police officer police sergeant. And I was following up uh, today at work with with uh, an incident that took place. And I got on the elevator 
just like I normally would and was uh, going up to the floor and a, a guy got on and he had some drinks looked like he was going to take care of a family or something that was on that that was on one of the floors and he looked and he saw me and something touched his heart or his mind or whatever he saw me uh in uniform and he said hey can i pray for you and immediately immediately uh we all wearing masks, of course, couldn't nobody see it. But when he said, can I pray for you? There was a smile that came to my face because first of all, there, there's something about understanding and realizing that when God is speaking to you, when God is trying to do something for you, there's something that you can feel on the inside that gives you a warm, good feeling that you know that this is something that God has ordained. This is something that is happening by God. And a smile came upon my face. He didn't see it because of my mask, but a smile came upon my face because all he had to do was, can I pray for you? That's all he had to say was, can I pray for you? And I looked and I can see the sincerity in his eyes that he really wanted to pray and had a genuine heart to pray for me. So by all means, I said, yes, uh, he was going to a different floor, but he stepped off on the floor that I was. And there we are. We stepped off the elevator right outside the elevator in, in public, right in everyone's view. And he prayed for me. Now, that took me to the scripture, uh, just the first part of it that says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, and just that next part that says, and pray. Just that little part of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, you, you, we, it's a very familiar scripture, but just that part of that particular scripture jumped out and reminded me that sometimes in order to have a real compassion, first of all, we got to humble ourselves. First of all, we have to humble ourselves in a sense of knowing that uh, pride can get in the way. Uh, you, we can get in our own way. Things happen to where we think that we get too good, we get too mighty, uh, and, and doing something for somebody else, sometimes some people have a hard heart, some people have a hard mind that, that they simply cannot do things like that. But here was a great example of someone that understood and had a drive and a compassion to say, can I pray for you? That especially in a society and climax of a world that we live in with uh, so many people not liking police officers, so many people uh, having so much hatred, so many people having these things. But here I am, a, a black man in a police uniform, and I have, let me throw this in there, I have a Hispanic man who looks at me and says, can I pray for you? It, it, it was, he didn't see a uniform. He didn't see my skin color. He didn't see, what he saw was an opportunity for him to pray and be a blessing to somebody else. That right there was something that I simply it blew me away. It blew me away that uh, we actually have people that are still in the mindset of saying, hey, I'm going to humble myself and pray. Now, granted, yeah, we, we need to pray. We need to talk to God. We need to have a conversation with him to get to know him. We need to read his word to learn more about him and the conversations that we have are one-on-one, -on -one, but it gets even sweeter. The blessings and the, the power of God gets even sweeter when we realize that not only do I need to pray for myself and humble myself, but I need to pray for somebody else as well. I can be a blessing to somebody else. I can help somebody uh, along the way. I can do something and, 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 and truly be after God's own heart. Look, David, David was a man after God's own heart. But if you think about it, and I heard someone say this earlier today, if you think about it, 
David was a man after God's own heart. What it means was he was seeking to be like God. He was seeking, he was chasing after God's heart. And we all know uh, if you have any type of relationship with God, we all know and realize that uh, God's heart <laughs> is a mighty good heart. God's heart is full of love. It's full of combat, compassion. It's full of forgiveness. It's full of mercy. It's full of grace. It's full of things that we don't even deserve. But here David was seeking and chasing to be and have a heart like God. It, it, it didn't mean that he had one like him. He was pursuing and chasing to have a heart like God. And in order to do that, in order to do that, we have to be humble. In order to do that, we have to humble ourselves and pray. And everything else that comes with it, seek his face, turn from the wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven. You, you ever wonder why certain situations that uh, uh, certain problems that you're having to endure. You ever wonder why uh, you can't seem to get out of that, 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 that hole that you just seemingly just continue to sit in? You ever, you ever wonder why you can't move from, uh, uh, from one bad situation to a good one? You ever wonder why it seems like you're just stuck in a rut and you want to move forward and you do everything that you possibly can, but yet and still nothing ever gets better. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That part right there, turning from wicked ways, turning from... <laughs> From, from hatred, turning from, oh, I don't like so-and-so, so I'm just going to uh, uh, hold this malice in my heart. I'm going to hold this grudge forever. I'm going to hold this to just till kingdom come, until God close my eyes. I'm going to hold it, but you find yourself still stuck because you refuse <laughs> to humble yourself. And we, we, we realize and we know, we understand that it's nothing but pride that's getting in the way and keeping you from, first of all, having compassion and the love enough to say, you know what? I'm going to be like God. I'm going to chase. I'm going to be like David and chase after God's heart and say, even though you my stumbling block, even though you, you, you've you knocked me off my straight and narrow, even though you caused me to use some words that I can't use at church, even though you, you, you made me have some thoughts that were impure, that are not like God, even though you put me in the wrong lane, guess what? Compassion kicks in. Love kicks in. Chasing after God's own heart and turning from your wicked ways. We're all guilty. We all have it. We, we all have wicked ways. We all have some things. Uh, it doesn't matter what size you may think. Oh, mine or oh, I just got a little bit. I, I, I'm just right. I, I, I ain't got much. Listen, a little bit or a lot, whatever it is, you have it. And that alone can truly be hindering you. That alone can truly be holding you back. That alone can be blocking your communication with God and stopping you from pushing forward. Sometimes we have to sit back and evaluate, man, what, what am I doing? What's going on? What, what, what is in my heart that, that's keeping me from moving forward? What is in my heart that God is waiting for me to fix? God is sitting back saying, oh, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I know what you need. I got it right here. I got it for you. I'm just waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to humble yourself. 
I'm waiting for you to turn from your wicked ways. I'm waiting for you. And sometimes we just sit and we say, I ain't doing nothing. It wasn't my fault. I, 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 I'm good. I, I think I, if you have to sit back and give yourself a pep talk, <laughs> if you have to sit back and give yourself a pep talk that you're not doing nothing wrong, you're not doing something uh -uh, that's not pleasing unto God, chances are you are doing something that you ain't got no business doing. Chances are you are holding on to something that is blocking you from receiving your blessing. And God is saying, hey, I'm waiting on you to fix that. If my people would humble themselves and pray. When that man prayed for me, listen, he, he, he prayed like he knew the Lord. He prayed in such a mighty way that after he prayed, I walked away with a great smile on my face and I felt immediately like, listen, after he prayed, I felt like I was covered. I felt like uh, uh, the presence of God was in that, just that between me and him, the conversation that was being held, I felt like it was received and it was taken into my heart. He didn't have to pray for me. He didn't have to, he, he didn't have to do that. But what he saw was an opportunity to cover somebody who was trying to help somebody else. And in return, let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. Sometimes we have to reevaluate our way of thinking when it comes to how we think we should receive our blessings. Some people got things mapped out of, hey, I'm, I'm supposed to receive my blessing in A, B, C order. I'm supposed to receive this in this exact order. That's how I mapped it out. That's how I expected for it to happen. That's how I thought everything was going to map out and how it was going to flow. But yet and still, sometimes, God thoughts, all the time. God thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So therefore, sometimes we have to move when God says move. Sometimes we have to uh, uh, stand still when God says don't move. But the thing is, we have to listen to what he is saying. And if we don't do that, we're going to miss the blessing. We're going to miss it. And, and it's not that, I get it, we don't do stuff purposely. We don't do things, uh, 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 well, sometimes we don't do things purposely to hurt. But, you know, you do got some people out there who actually have a hard heart. We actually have people out there who are uh, in the mindset of, I'm just here to do one thing, call all kind of chaos and hell for whoever I can. That, that we, we have people like that. But think about this. God can work with anybody. God can work with a whole lot of people. God can work with uh, anybody. Listen, if you have a hard head, God can do some things with you. If it's all up here, you just being hard headed and being just doing just, just stuff that's from the mind that you don't really think. And you'd be like, oh, I'm, uh, you know, God can work with that. But I believe it said, harden not your heart. So if your heart is hardened, <laughs> that, that, that's a hard place to be in. If your heart is is hard. And that means you, you are so closed off that you just refuse to receive anything. Because why? Because your heart is cold. It's black. It's just, it's just a hard heart that it's, that's difficult to work with. That, that, that's, that is the, so, so, so we have kids. If, if you're a parent, you, you can definitely relate to this. You have kids, especially if you have a toddler. If you have a little kid 
And this little kid is acting up. This and 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 my my two year old, uh, he 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 does it. If you have a kid that's acting up and he's being bad and he's a toddler, chances are it's because they don't know any better. They have to be taught. They have to be uh, directed. They have to be given some guidance. They have to be led. And that's simply because probably they haven't learned enough and you have to teach them. And it's all within their heads. That's why we call, you know, a lot of kids hard-headed. You call people, they so hard-headed. You can't get through to them, this, that, and the other. When in fact, you can get through to them. They just have to be taught and educated in a way that it can be received. And once they learn it, guess what? Now they'll get better. But in the midst of it, you have to teach them. Sometimes you have to discipline them. Sometimes you have to not spare the rod and do the things to get them to understand. And that's due to them, again, lack of knowledge, a hard head, or whatever the case may be. But fast forward, and if you have to deal with somebody, if you have to deal with somebody that has a hardened heart, That, that That's a difficult person to deal with. That is a hard place to be in, to deal with somebody with a hardened heart. That requires patience, definitely love, some compassion, and God. You're going to have to turn it over to God first. But the thing about it is, if your head is hard, that can be worked with. But if your heart is not, that's going to take some time. But if you see people, and there are some people whose heart, oh my God, their heart is just so full of love and compassion and, and appreciation for, for others and, and they want to sincerely help somebody along the way. There, there are some people that, uh, that will bless people and not tell you. There are people that, that uh, and you've, I'm sure you've seen many of these shows, you've seen many of these things take place. I watched one today and this right here, this compassion, this this love, this this just this just kindness for a human, <laughs> just kindness for a human being blew me away. This I watched this video today, and a guy was standing in line. Looks like he was at a Target or somewhere. He was standing in line, and and, and, and some of you probably can attest because I know some of y'all got some good hearts. But he was standing in line. He was waiting patiently. Uh, and, and the lady in front of him, the lady in front of him, watch this. The lady in front of him was trying to pay for their items. Swiping the card, decline. Swiping the card, decline. Swiping the card, decline. Tried several different cards, decline. And then she started to, once that happened a few times, she started to look at the items that she had and she started to try to put things back. She started trying to put back the diapers. She started trying to put back uh, 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 some other things. But this man was watching and finally he stepped up. He said, listen, he said, he's, how much do you have? I think the bill was like $24. He said, how much do you have? She said, I got like $14. He said, don't worry about it. He said, whatever she has, leave it and just put it with mine. That's, a, that's an upstanding gentleman. That's an upstanding man to be able to say, listen, I am going to take care of your needs that you are trying to purchase right now. And he stepped up, he took care of it, and, and, and he didn't think anything else of it. She said, thank you and whatnot. And she went on outside. This man, he continued, he paid for whatever, and he walked out and watched this. Sometimes, <laughs> I'm not saying do things, and we shouldn't do things to 
expect something in return. We shouldn't do that. If you're doing something, again, compassion, love, you ought to be doing it out of the goodness of your heart to truly help somebody along the way. But he did that and he did it and he walked out. And when he got outside, when he got outside, the lady was standing out there waiting and he, there was a film crew there and they was watching him and what they, they ended up talking to him. And he said, listen, listen, I, I, I'm great. She said, I'm greatly appreciative of what you did and how you stepped up and what made you step up. And this, his comments reminded me and should remind a whole lot of us of of looking of where we are now and where we used to be or where we're getting ready to go. He said, I saw a need and I remember, here it is, I remember when I used to be in that situation. My God. <laughs> he said, I remember when I used to be in that situation, I would go in the store and need some things and only have about $3 on me. And I had to start putting things back to get so I could purchase at least something that I needed to be able to survive. He said, I remember, but I found, now I found myself in a better situation. He said he found himself now where he didn't have a job. Now he has a job. Now he's doing a little bit better. So now when he said, I saw myself in that situation and it very well was me, but he can still be me. But he said, I wanted to help because I know how it is. Many of us have situations of we know how it is. Many of us have our own testimonies that we could relate to somebody else and we could help pull them up by the sense of love and compassion just to help them out. We have that ability in our hearts and our minds just if we remember the things that God has done for us, the lifting that he's blessed us with and remember that, hey, it still can be us. But look at the compassion in the heart of this guy. So what happened was they looked at him. They said, listen, because of your heart, because of your, your, your willingness to help somebody else, watch the blessing. The blessing was, and it may not be much to somebody, but the blessing was the $24 that he took and paid for this young lady. They met him outside. It was obviously it was a show to see what people are going to do. They met him outside and they not only reimbursed him of the money that he paid for her stuff and his, they gave him an additional $200. May not be much to some folk, but the blessing that was received, the, the, the lesson that was uh, uh, that was given was simply that if you have the love and compassion and the mind to say, I want to help somebody else along the way, you can be blessed. That's what happened. Will it happen immediately just like that? No. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't. But however you think about it, God is still going to bless you when you show that love and compassion to help somebody else. When that man prayed for me, when he had the love and compassion to look at me in, the, in an elevator to say, hey, listen, can I pray for you? Guess what? God saw his heart. God saw his actions. And I'm sure somewhere down the line, that man is going to receive a blessing. As a matter of fact, whoever he was visiting, it could very well be that person in the hospital that has now received a healing by the way of God because he had the compassion. He had the compassion. No, it wasn't John. Uh, it, it wasn't what would you do? It, it was very similar. This was just an act. It, it, was, it was very similar, but you have to be careful because again, that same situation, that, that, that same thing was it's kind of like many have entertained angels unaware in his situation. Here he is in his situation. Here he is. He's blessing this lady. It's an angel. It's God coming. Say, you remember when I was in the store and I needed some help and you just had a, you just turned me away. Listen, many have entertained angels unaware. And we do that because either I, 
Our head is hard. Our heart is hard. We don't have the love. We don't have the compassion for human and mankind. And we miss blessings because we refuse to do it. If my people would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, my God today. Listen, sometimes we just have to, we, we got we, we to gotta find some, some humbleness within us. And, and, and when you find it, and when you find it, and, 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 and you can, you're going to have your own testimony because when you find it, that rut that you've been stuck in, guess what? He's going to pull you out. And when he pulls you out, it, it, you're going to start moving fast. And some things that you thought that you wasn't able to accomplish, he will pull you up and say, listen, that's what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting to see your humbleness. I've been waiting to see your compassion. I've been waiting to see the love that you have. And now that I see it, then will I hear from heaven. Then when I forgive their sin, then will I heal their land. We have to, we have to find some compassion. We have to find some love. We have to, we have to find some forgiveness. We have to open up. We have to say, Lord, here am I. Here am I, send me. But if you pray that, if you say that, don't be scared. Don't be scared of where he sends you because he may send you to some places <laughs> that you might not even want to go. He may send you to some places you might need to go. He may send you to some places you might like. You never know. But whatever he got, whatever he sends you, go with an open mind and open heart to say, not my will, but thy will be done. It's in that moment that we can say, listen, I, 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 it, it just blew me away when that man said, can I pray for you? It, it was like, it, it, it's, when you know that God is doing something for you, the revelation that you receive in that moment, my goodness, it's, it's a revelation and a removing of a, a veil that just gives you a glimpse of knowing that God's got you covered. When you hear it, it's like, God's got me covered. It's a, it's a great reminder to let you know God still loves me, still cares for me. And maybe I should do the same. We sing songs, I'm chasing after you. I'm trying to have a heart like you. Give me a clean heart. We, 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 we recite scriptures and we, we remember the things that, that God would have us to do. I think we're now at an opportunity and a time to say, I need to go from just reading and just hearing to now some action. Let your first action be compassion, love, forgiveness. And with those things, Watch God move. I don't know how he's going to move. I wish I could tell you. I, do, I really do wish I could tell you. But what I do know is my faith is strong enough to know that he will move. And whatever it is that you've been asking, it's coming. It's going to happen. Your breakthrough is coming. Seek his face. Turn from the wicked ways. Whatever has you that has a stronghold, pray, God, get this off of me. Let me let it go. And when you let it go, when you let it go and you turn it over to God, <laughs> that's when you'll realize God's got me. God's got me. And when God got you, hey, the devil got to go. 
It's too much for him. It's, it, you, 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 too, you too much to touch now if the devil, if, if, if the Lord has you. The devil, he just got to go. So remember again, love, compassion, forgiveness. If you have these, great, strengthen them. If you need to redevelop them, work on them. And, and let me, <laughs> and this one, and then I'm done. If you pray for more compassion, more love, more forgiveness, understand that in order to develop these things, you will find yourself in a situation to where you have to use those things. What's the best way to teach somebody? What's the best way you teach your kids? What's the best way uh, 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 you, you learn at school? You learn by doing. So I'm just going to give you a fair warning. <laughs> if you're praying for better compassion, better love, or forgiveness, you'll find yourself in a situation to where, oh, Lord, I know what you're doing. I don't, I, I don't want to fail the test. I don't want to feel it. I want to be able to say, hey, this is what God gave me. This was the test that he put me in by his permissive will. And now I'm going to pass it and watch what he does. And from my test, I'm going to go from test to testimony. That's simple. Amen. Amen. God is good. And I hope, I hope that something was said on tonight that you could take it and apply it to your everyday living, that you could have a closer walk with him. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how again, we thank you just for, first of all, giving us the perfect example of compassion, love, and forgiveness. We thank you for sending your son who gave his life for us, oh God, and how he laid it down and picked it back up again. God, we thank you just for that love, forgiveness, and compassion that was showed, even though we're so undeserving. But now, God, how we pray that you would continue to strengthen our walk with you, continue to give us the mind and hearts to want to truly have a heart and chase a heart to be like yours. God, we pray right now for everyone that's watching, oh God. Father, whatever special prayer request that may be needed right now, God, I pray that you would uh, uh, allow your angels, allow your hand to move upon every household, every request, if it be your will. Father, I pray that you would grant it right now in the name of Jesus. We don't know what it is, if it's healing, if it's a breakthrough, if it's a regulation of mind, or God, if it's just someone that's in a great place. We say thank you for all that you've done and what you're going to do. But now, God, as we get ready to go into this the rest of your week, God, we pray that you would continue to keep us, continue to walk with us and talk with us, be a lamp unto our feet that we may not stray from you, that we can come back and come running to you saying, Lord, thank you for all that you've done. God, we thank you again for everyone that is tuned in. Be a blessing unto them. Let them feel your presence right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in on tonight. Uh, it is my sincere prayer that something was said that you could take it, apply it to your everyday living. Uh, also, as a quick reminder, uh, we are definitely, uh, and I'm excited about it, we are getting so much closer uh, it looks like we are going to actually approach a re-entry into the church uh, for the first Sunday in October. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, uh, keep watching. Keep following us. Keep watching and going to the website. More information will be coming. Uh, very soon on what uh, the steps will be. Uh, again, it's going to be structured. It's going to be organized uh, because we want to make sure we're following all the guidelines necessary uh, from the CDC, the state, whatever. We want to make sure that we are very compliant. But not only that, we want to make sure that we uh, keep everyone safe uh, and, and and not be uh, sub uh, come to, uh, 
taken over by this virus. So uh, stay tuned, uh, but October, the first Sunday in October is coming and we cannot wait. Uh, registration will be required. Some things are going to be put in place and they'll be coming out very soon. But continue to be in prayer. Continue to uh, be in prayer for the Greater Bethel Church as well as our pastor, uh, Dr. McNeely. Continue to keep him lifted in your prayers. And we hope to see you uh, right back here on Sunday, 10 a.m. for our Sunday live service uh, from the church. And uh, with that, have a great week and rest of your week. And I'm going to leave you with a pretty good hot little number. Amen.
Amen. See y'all Sunday.